Alright, so let's set up our displacement properly in Blender. We first need to bring in our displacement map, or a height map as it's sometimes called. But when we drag that into our shader editor, the default color space is RGB, but we want to change this from sRGB to non-color whenever we deal with height maps. And I change the interpolation from linear to smart. I found that this works best, either smart or cubic, but I mostly use smart. And with the node selected, press Ctrl T, so we could automatically add our text according it and map in node. And now we need one more node, which is the displacement node. So press Shift A and add a vector displacement. Not to be confused with the vector displacement below there. That is something else. So just in the vector menu, click on displacement and drop that there. Let's bring these nodes a bit closer. Now we want to plug the color socket into the height socket and then the displacement into the displacement of the material output. So let's see what we have. Let's press Z and go into rendered view. Let's go across the world properties and give it a texture. So click on the yellow dot and give it a sky texture. A bit bright. So I usually change the strength from 1 to 0.3 and I do the same thing for the intensity. Good, so now we see something. We see our black and white text here. We see the, the fake details or the bump details. But it, it is not being displaced. And the reason for that is because there are only four vertices on this plane. If you look at the bottom, you will see four vertices, edges, faces. So this needs some more geometry. So we can add a subdivision surface modifier. Generate subsurf. Change a simple. Let's turn off optimal display. So that we could see what is happening. So let's turn on wireframe so we'll see. So you notice you see this subdivide subdivided once. And as I increase this, you'll notice the plane is being subdivided more. Now we have it at six subdivisions. If I turn off wireframe, we still don't see we don't see it actually move any geometry. Let's make sure we have this other setting enabled in material properties. Scroll all the way down to where it says settings. And it changes from bump only to displacement and bump. So we got some slight movement there, but nothing really. Maybe we need to increase the scale. So let's hold shift and increase this. All right. So we see something. Let's go into camera view. And there's some displacement. And remember, we have it all the way to six, the, the viewport levels. So there's a better way to do this. It's called adaptive subdivision. So to enable that feature, we need to click on the render properties and switch it from the feature set from supported to experimental. Now what that does, now when we add a modifier, a subdivision surface modifier, it gives us this option now, adaptive subdivision. Let's turn it to simple. And this doesn't matter, this viewport levels, because everything is controlled by these uh, adaptive subdivisions. In this case, the Dyson scale is set to 8. By default, we set to 1. And if I go to camera view so this is what it looks like here but if i if i press f12 to render you'll notice it looks a lot better way better than how it looks in a viewport so let me show you the advantage of this visually if it is i use this wireframe node here and i'll explain what is happening so i'm plugging this wireframe node so what is happening is that with adaptive subdivision it subdivides the mesh that is closer to the camera more than the ones that are outside. All right, so when I'm in camera view here, I set the dicing scale to four. And let me switch from the solid view back to camera view. And let me come out and you see exactly what is happening. So here it's subdivided a lot more closer to the camera, but outside of the camera, it's subdivided much less. So let me turn back over. So that is why when we, let me plug back in or render. That is why when we look at it through the camera view, let me back out a bit. It may look like that, but then when we press F12 to render, it looks a lot smoother. So closer to the camera is subdivided a lot more. And we still see those artifacts, and that's because I set the Dyson scale to 4. The lower it is, the higher quality. Default by default is set to 1. I sometimes set it to like 2 to get faster renders, but... If I set it to 1, it looks like this in the viewport, but when you press F12, you get really nice, smooth looking details in our displacement. And that's exactly what we want when we're doing our product rendering. Alright? 
So I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one. Want to learn how to create luxury whiskey renders like this using Blender? In this premium course, I'll walk you through the full professional workflow from a cube to a polished finished whiskey render. We start by modeling the bottle and liquid in detail, making sure everything looks and feel real world scale. You will get a clear understanding of how the light path node works, what is it and how to use it to your advantage in glass rendering. Next, you'll build your own glass shader from scratch, no copy and paste, you'll actually learn how it works. We'll explore this placement and more importantly, how to properly set it up in Blender to add depth and realism. You'll even create your own displacement patterns using the free vector tool Inkscape then bring those patterns into Blender and apply them professionally. We'll generate high quality normal maps and dive into advanced texture and workflows. You'll learn how to create a fully custom label shader, one that holds up in close-up shots. You'll master camera composition and you use depth of field to guide your viewer's eye just like a product photographer would. And of course, we'll tackle the most anticipating part lighting. We're going to use my Ultimate Studio Lights node group and I'll show you how to light just like professional product photographers. And as a bonus, you will learn the cleanest way to create stunning wireframe renders for your portfolio. By the end of this course, you will have a complete polished whiskey render and the knowledge to recreate this level of quality in your own product renders. Enroll now, the complete guide to 3D Whiskey in Blender. I'll see you inside.